Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and the beautiful 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Eric declares that no one can stop him, not even Ridge in the design office. Carter was working on a contract when Thomas arrived to recompense Carter with a cup of coffee after Carter had gotten one for Thomas the other day. The men discussed the success of hope for the future, and Carter said Ridge was proud of Thomas. Carter claimed he ribbed Ridge about it because generally, Ridge was grumpy, unless he was pumped with pride, talking about Thomas. It meant a lot to Thomas to hear it. He was grateful that his father recognized the work he'd done to transform. Carter supposed it had been twice as hard to do once R.G. had returned, with R.J. being Brooke's son and all. Thomas responded that he and R.G. had been cool and had a really excellent relationship. Carter remarked that it could be tough, and Thomas admitted that was true, particularly after things he'd done in the past. Carter was pleased Ridge's sons weren't at war. Thomas said they were foresters, and foresters stayed together. Carter pondered if R.G. had discussed design or being in the business. Thomas reported that he'd offered to teach R.J., but Thomas didn't see R.G. taking to the pencil the way Thomas, Ridge, Eric, and Zandy had. Carter remarked that they'd all been mentored by Eric. Carter inquired how things would go when Eric stepped down. Thomas didn't know. He said Steffi was crushing it as CEO, and Ridge, Zend, and he had design covered. Thomas figured that Eric wanted it that way. In Eric's office, Brooke and Ridge canoodled, and she wished everyone could be so joyful. He presumed she was referring to Hope and Liam. Brooke wanted to assist Hope and do something about things to make sure Hope didn't live with regret. Ridge reminded Brooke that his mother had liked to do things about other people's love affairs. Brooke chuckled and decided to take the comparison to Stephanie. In her latter years, as a compliment, Ridge believed that the grown-up Hope, Liam, and Thomas could figure things out. Brooke and Ridge noted that they hadn't seen much of RJ. He developed a habit of being home late, when they were in bed, and of snoozing in. Ridge said it sounded like there was a woman involved. Ridge griped about RJ being indifferent in their company. Brooke said it might be a mystery female on their son's mind. Ridge wondered why it had to be a girl who took one's money and wanted to drive one's vehicle when they didn't know how. Brooke scowled at Ridge. He said women could also be an inspiration, and his inspiration was in front of him. She suggested that Eric speak to RG liking the idea. Ridge said Eric could teach RG and be a great mentor. However, Ridge believed Eric was in a strange place. Ridge asked if Brooke would speak to Donna and have her remind Eric that it was the time of his life to travel and have fun while Ridge covered the stress of the company. Ridge acknowledged that Eric was an icon in the industry and should travel and appreciate his fame wherever he went. Ridge said Kutcher, Brooke's bedroom, and HFTF were taken care of. Convinced, Brooke said she was headed to see Donna anyway, so Brooke would speak to her sister. After Brooke had gone, Ridge picked up Eric's framed portrait and grinned. Later, Ridge was drafting when Thomas arrived. Thomas complimented Ridge's design. Thomas felt privileged and lucky to work under Ridge. Ridge replied that fate had nothing to do with it. The passion was running through his veins. Thomas remarked that he and Carter didn't believe R.G. shared the passion. Ridge said R.G. would discover his calling. Ridge expressed pleasure in his son. Thomas said he adored working on HFTF, but wanted to collaborate with his father and learn more. Ridge said it was the way he'd learned from his dad. Admitting to worrying about Eric, Ridge said he wanted Eric to appreciate life because they had the company covered without him. Ridge asked if Thomas concurred. Thomas agreed. In Eric's living room, R.G. sketched at Eric's direction. Two dress forms with half-built dresses were in the background and swatches of fabrics were dispersed around the room. R.G. was attempting something new with the sketch. Eric said designing fed them, and R.G. acknowledged that it felt quite familiar to him. Eric stated that design coursed through their veins, and it was the lifeblood of Forrester. The collection would be Eric's grand culmination, 
And because he and R.G. were doing it together, he believed he and R.G. would learn from each other. Eric continued to instruct R.G. on a sketch. R.G. was impressed at how a subtle change had transformed the design. Eric said the design had developed its own melody. Dancing. Eric added that it would acquire a heartbeat. In his view, the woman donned the dress, not the other way around. Viewing the design again, Eric said it wasn't singing yet, but it was a work in progress. Dawn arrived. She was happy to see Eric entirely in his element. Eric attributed it to his grandchild. She said the living room appeared like a design studio, bubbling with creativity. Eric asked if his supplies were on the way. Donna said they would be delivered to the office. He wished his order to remain secret, but Donna replied that the new intern would be discreet and know how to handle it. Donna adored seeing Eric on fire. He said she was his muse, but she had to go so he and R.G. could work on the finest collection of his life. Later, Eric played a piano that was covered in fabric samples. Donna arrived with refreshments. She said she adored it when Eric played. Eric enjoyed it too, and he said his therapist had advised that it was good for his hands. He couldn't create without music and said halfway through a music piece, he'd get a notion. Eric offered to have martinis after work. Donna informed Eric that Prince Albert had called to invite Eric to an event. Eric said Albert would understand that they couldn't make it because of the collection, although Donna would look magnificent in one of the new gowns. He wanted the collection to be a surprise for everyone, particularly Ridge, this collection that my grandson and I have done. Later, Eric sketched the closing touches on a design and showed it to RJ. RG was astonished that it all had come from Eric noodling around on the piano. It's a Rachmaninoff tune. Eric informed RJ. Eric believed that the woman who donned the dress would be as inspired by the enchantment as Eric had been. Donna and R.G. dubbed it amazing. Brooke arrived and saw Eric showing R.G. a technique. What is going on here? She inquired. Brooke was ecstatic to see R.G. designing. Eric said they were doing it together. Brooke stated that it was even better and Ridge would be thrilled. Brooke asked why they weren't in the office. Eric asserted that they desired privacy. Confused, Brooke said the family always worked together. She didn't get what was going on. Eric announced that he was working on a new line. Brooke cited that Ridge was head of coacher in overseeing the company. I am Eric Forrester. I'm designing a new line with my grandson. No one is going to stop me. Not even Ridge, Eric declared. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.